Didn't somebody do something about that? Hey everybody and welcome to The Whole Truth where I am taking you through the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation and we are not skipping anything. So if that sounds good to you, make sure to reach down and hit the little subscribe button below. Don't forget, you can go over to thewholetruthbiblestudy.com and find all the videos in one convenient location. That's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and now in the book of Numbers. All the way through the Bible, that's how we're gonna do this. I hope that you'll come along with me. The most important thing. You've got to open up your Bible. That's what I want you to do today. Whether it's on your phone, your tablet, whether it's a, a physical Bible, I want you to open it up and let's read God's Word together and see what He has for us. We're in Numbers chapter 5 today, and it's one of those chapters that seems a little strange to us because we start to read about lepers, and God reiterates again. He doubles down and says that if there's a leper in the camp, he's got to be put out of the camp. Why? Why does God say stuff like this? And then he goes on to talk about if somebody like sins against somebody else, how restitution needs to be made. And then, and then we wrap this little section up before we get into another one. We'll do that in tomorrow's video. We wrap this little section up with God talking about a man's offering, like this offering, the part that gets to be his. What do all these things have to do with each other? Well, I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you exactly how it applies to you and I, but we got to read it first. Numbers chapter 5, verse 1. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they put out of the camp every leper, everyone who has a discharge, and whoever becomes defiled by a corpse. You shall put both male and female, you shall put them outside the camp, that they may not defile their camps in the midst of which I dwell. And the children of Israel did so, and put them outside the camp as the Lord spoke to Moses, so the children of Israel did. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, speak to the children of Israel when a man or woman commits any sin that men commit in unfaithfulness against the Lord, that person is guilty. And then he shall confess the sin which he has committed. He shall make restitution for his trespass in full plus one fifth of it and give it to the one he has wronged. But if the man has no relative to whom restitution may be made for the wrong, the restitution for the wrong must go to the Lord for the priest. In addition to the rain of the atonement with which the atonement is made for him. Every offering of the holy things of the children of Israel, which they bring to the priest, shall be his, and every man's holy things shall be his. Whatever any man gives the priest shall be his. Now, there are kind of three different parts there. We start out with these lepers. Now, why are why is God seeming to be picking on these lepers? Somebody with leprosy, they've got a skin disease or potentially somebody with a discharge. Leprosy kind of covered a, a large degree of of um, of diseases, especially skin diseases. They were lumped under this umbrella of leprosy. And anybody that's got any discharge and anybody that's got anything oozing, anybody that's got any leprosy, they've got to be put outside the camp. Now, at this point, this isn't just the law, but this is the fulfillment of the law. Remember that numbers is not just a census, but it's the people of God getting ready to go into the promised land. They refuse to go in and then they have to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. It's the wilderness wanderings. That's why the Hebrew name for numbers is in the wilderness. And so in the wilderness is the wilderness as they were going into the promised land. So before you can go, you have to make good on what God has told you to do. And what's God told you to do? He's told the Israelite people to put out the lepers. Guess what time it is? You got to go put the lepers out. You can't let the lepers stay inside of Israel. They've got to be put outside of the camp. So this is the fulfillment of what God has told them to do. Why is God making them get the lepers out of the camp? Well, he says it. We don't want to add to God's word. Remember, we want to see what does God's word say, and then how does that apply to us? Well, what does he say in verse uh, 4? He says that, um, that you shall not have them defile the camps, 
in the midst of which I dwell. I said verse four, but that's actually verse three. At the end of verse three, he says, in the midst of which I dwell. The children of Israel did so, and they put outside the camp as the Lord spoke to to Moses, so the children of Israel did. So what I'm saying to you is in Leviticus, the law was given, but now in Numbers chapter five, they're going to have to do it. You got to look. Can you imagine like this is a guy looking at his friend and saying, you can't stay in the camp. You have to be outside of the camp. That's not to say you're starving them to death or you're not taking care of them. Most people even believe that this is the beginning of what became hospitals later, where you would take diseased people and put them into a particular place so that you could, you could, they could be nursed back to health. But what you can't do is stay inside of the camp because you're, you have leprosy. Can I just start with this? I, I need you to hear this. Think of this. Is leprosy something that someone could control? Did somebody openly sin a sin to now have leprosy? The answer is no. It's an uncontrollable thing. It's a disease. It's something that they, they have from birth, just like sin. You see, the example that's given here, the illustration that's given here, is that leprosy can't be in the camp because that's where God dwells. Friends, sin can't be in the camp, your camp, your life. Sin can't be in your life if God's going to dwell there. You see, there's this issue that God is holy and he's not going to be around sin. He can't be around sin. He won't be around sin. But here's this thing. From birth, you and I, we have sin. We are sinners from birth. And you might go, well, Justin, that's unfair. I had no choice in that. That's true. The leper had no choice either. And so God is giving this object lesson that nothing defiled can be around him. Well, so what are we supposed to do? Well, that's what the next section's all about. Look at what happens next in Numbers. Then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel. When a man or woman commits any sin, that man commits it in unfaithfulness against the Lord and that person is guilty. Then he shall confess the sin which he has committed. You got to confess the sin. Then after the person confesses their sin, He says that they're to make restitution for their trespass in full plus one fifth. So not only do they confess their sins, but restitution has to be made. Hang on, stick with me. That's what it is for you and I with sin. When have we sinned against God? Well, when you did it to the least of these, your brother, and you committed it against God. And God can't have any sin around him. So what has to be done? Restitution has to be made. And that starts with confession. You see, the Bible is clear in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 9. If you will confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of all unrighteousness. You see, the Bible has concluded that all of us are sinners. We're, we're like the men with leprosy. From birth, uncontrollable, nothing you have physically done yet, but you are a sinner from birth. And then guess what? That bleeds into your life and you commit actual sins against other people. You're unfaithful to the Lord when you are unfaithful to other people. That's what, is that not what he says when uh, Moses said, speak to the children of Israel, when a man or woman commits any sin, that man commit, that men commit an unfaithfulness against the Lord. That person is guilty. The sin is against the Lord, but read what's next. Then he shall confess that sin which he has committed and he shall make restitution of his trespass plus one fifth and he shall and and give it to the one he has wronged. But if the man has no relative, wait, so it's a man. He sinned against a man, but that sin was against the Lord. So what does he do? He has to confess. That's what you and I have to do. We have to confess. And but it can't just be that, oh, well, I just say I'm sorry. I just admit that I've done something wrong and now it's all good. No restitution has to be made. Well, how's restitution going to be made? How are you going to make restitution? I remember one time I had a child and they um, carved into some of the wood in my home. I had like a wood, kind of like a ledge and they carved into the wood in my home. And they came to me and they admitted, dad, I, I messed up. And they told me that they had carved into the, into the wood. Now, I was upset with them. They apologized to me. But here's this problem. My kids don't know how to take a razor knife and cut the caulking along the trim. 
they don't know how to get a crowbar and pull the trim off of there. And they don't have the money to go buy more trim and put more trim in the house, nor can they then paint it with the same trim paint that I've used in the rest of the house. They were too young to do that. They could not physically replace or fix the trim that they had, that they had, the wood that they had carved into. I had to do that. But at the same time, later I wanted to sell that house. I couldn't leave their carvings in the wood. I needed to replace the wood so that it didn't look bad. So who had to do that? I did. Yes, they said they were sorry, but restitution still had to be made. Hear this. Your sin that you've committed, restitution has to be made, but you can't make it. You can't do it on your own. All you can do is confess the Lord He's the one who had to pay for your sin. So he sent his son, Jesus. That's why he sent Jesus. Are you sticking with this? Do you see the storyline of Numbers chapter five? What's really happening? Everybody is concluded as a sinner from birth. And you might look at this. God told us this in the New Testament, the book of Galatians, the Old Testament, the law. It's a schoolmaster. It's a teacher to teach us about Jesus. And see, you and I, we are sinners from birth. And you might go, that's unfair. It's true. Adam and Eve messed up and they brought sin into the world. Mankind brought sin into the world. And now it is imputed. It's given to each person. And then it bleeds into our life and we sin. Because we are sinners, we sin. That's why we have to confess and put our faith in Jesus and his finished work. Because he is the only one who can truly make restitution for us. And then there's this last part though. What's this all about? In verse 9, every offering of all the holy things of the children of Israel, which they bring to the priest, shall be his. Every man's holy things, uh, every man's holy things shall be his. Whatever any man gives, the priest shall be his. You see, when you would bring in the ancient world, you bring things to the priest. And when you would bring them to the priest, part of that was yours. In other words, you bring a, a bull, you take that bull, you bring it to the priest as an offering, but you take some of it and you and your family eat some of that offering. Everything that you bring, it's yours. You get to bring that to the Lord. You get to bring that. And, and here's what it really means as a, a law inside of Israel. The king cannot tax away your offering. You can, That's yours. Nobody else can take that. That is your offering that you're going to take to the Lord. That's the law of the land that God was setting up. But here's this beautiful thing. What was the point of an offering? It was fellowship with God. If man wanted to get to God, what did he do? He went to the priest. If, you, if you're confused, if you're new to this video, there's, that's in my video series. The prophet was God's mouthpiece. God to man was the prophet. But man wants to get to God, he would go to the priest. So if man wants to get to God, he has to go to the priest and he has to make an offering. And here's what God says. You, ancient Israel, you have a part in that offering. Some of that offering is, is yours. You see this? Where did we start? leprosy, something the man couldn't control. And he had to put, be put outside of the camp because of that. And God says to, is to the ancient world that if a man commits a sin, he has to make restitution. He has to confess that sin and make restitution. And then what? He talks about the offering of going into the tabernacle and taking your offering and having fellowship with the Lord. Your confession and the restitution that has been made is so that you who are a sinner can have a relationship with God. That's the aim. That's the, that's the whole thing that God wants. That is the tenor of his whole word, is that God wants to make restitution with you. You who walked away from him, you who sinned against him, he's making a way for you to be in a relationship with him. He's opening up the door so that you and I can be in a relationship, a right relationship with him as God, where we'll be his people and he'll be our God. Have you done that? Have you put your faith in Jesus? Have you trusted in the restitution that he's made and the payment that he's made? Jesus died on the cross. He was buried in a tomb. And three days later, he rose again. He has paid for your sin. Will you accept and believe that? Will you confess your sins and trust that he'll be faithful and just to forgive you? 
of all unrighteousness. It's always about him. And he wants you to have a relationship with him. That's the offer that he's been making you. That's the good news of the gospel right there in Numbers chapter five. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you'll come back tomorrow as we get into more of Numbers chapter five. It's pretty crazy. You got some people in adultery and they got to drink some crazy stuff. You come see for yourself. See you guys then.